Hi, welcome to the Bootstrap Algebra lesson on coordinates and game design. Uh, this is the second lesson, so make sure you've watched through the first lesson, done all of the uh, you do or to do assignments uh, inside there so that you're completely ready for continuing with your game design and seeing how those, uh, seeing how various elements can map to the coordinate system that you use for Wii Scheme. Let's uh, make sure your environment is set up. Um, we're not going, we don't, we won't need to do any Wii Scheme today, but just to make sure everything's set up, let's go ahead and play Ninja Cat briefly. So I'm going to go into, so here I am at WeScheme.org. I'm going to go into my programs, bootstrap starter files, ninja cat. Got to click in there once so that everything works. I didn't think I was going to get a wave of his teeth. His hit box is not too wide, so as long as you avoid his teeth, you can get on his head and still survive. I'm just going to get another ruby before I quit. Ah, oh, okay. So go ahead and pause now. Play through Ninja Cat on Wii Scheme just to make sure everything's good for logging in. Um, we won't need Wii Scheme for the rest of the, the class today, but just want to make sure that you get to play Ninja Cat a little bit as we talk about your game design. All right, let's continue. I'm going to close that. And let's also make sure that we're set up with our materials. So at bootstrapworld.org courses algebra latest version or scroll down beyond coordinates and game design when we do our review we'll look and see what our goals were make sure we hit all of those I'm going to go through the lesson slides and we'll go through these different worksheets as we um, progress through the class so we talked a little bit about last time about um, the things that change in the Ninja Cat game. And one of those is the position of the images on the screen. And um, we'll talk about using uh, about how that, that works in, in Wii Scheme and in games in general. So computers use numbers to represent the char character's position uh, according to a number line. So here in this example, we have zero on the far left, 1,000 on the far right. And let's say if we talk about the center of this dog, he's just a little bit almost halfway. So maybe 540 or so, I would guess. Um, we would draw a number line so that um, I'm not sure why this example is here because we're actually not going to use a thousand on the right. You'll see in the other examples that we use 640. So um, whoever did this example in these slides um, didn't look at the rest of them, but it doesn't doesn't matter um, as long as you know what your grid layout is and what your game engine expects you can use any grid layout you want um, and, and we'll we'll get more into that more later but what if one number isn't enough uh, for the dog in ninja cat it is because he goes left and right but what if he went up and down we would need another axis so let's um, go to page four estimating coordinates so we'll go here, estimating coordinates. Got a new sheet. Don't forget, you can always um, also use the, the PDF, which you can find at the main page for the 2020 fall curriculum. Um, and it's about a 64 page PDF that you can print out or that you can just use uh, on your computer or print out one uh, day at a time if you want to. Um, or you can keep track in a, in a separate notebook so you don't have to use it exactly like this. But here is the Ninja Cat layout. We got four different elements on the screen. And as I said, here's 00, zero on the bottom left. Here's 640 on the right. So on uh, top right is 640 by 480. And here's 0, 0480. So it's 640 units left to right, 480 units tall. And you can see it's not quite square. It's a little more rectangular with a long part at the bottom and a little less height on the top. 
and that would be a certain aspect ratio it's called just like your uh, smartphone screen is a certain aspect ratio that's a little bit different than your television probably that's a little bit different than your computer screen um, so all of those are kind of industry set and this 640 by 480 is represents a common aspect ratio all right what do they want us to do so I'm going to put the coordinates in these XY pairs, if you remember that from algebra, and we'll talk more about that um, in a couple of slides, of where things are. And clearly there's no exact answer because they haven't even given us a grid, but we pay attention to the relative positions so that you know that the danger dog is to the right, so he's going to have a greater X coordinate than Ninja Cat. Right, and and if you have to, to to try to pinpoint, use this kind of what you would expect to be the center of the image. So for this cloud, we'll pick you know that eye right there. That's probably a little bit to the right of the center of Ninja Cat. So his x coordinate, its x coordinate, will be just a little bit to the right. And of course, its its y coordinate is going to be much bigger than Ninja Cat's. So why don't you go ahead? and estimate what you think the x and y coordinates are. So go ahead and pause the video now and do that. All right. So here's how I'm thinking through these. Um, and uh, hopefully you did as you wrote down those estimates. And again, with any estimate, it's really important to write it down so that we get it really firm uh, in our uh, brains and commit to that estimate so that then when we learn more information, we can really update our thinking. So should any of the characters have X coordinates that are very similar? Well, let's look. X coordinates going to be how far they are from the left hand side. So like we discussed, Ninja Cat is fairly similar to the cloud. But look at these guys. I would say the center of the ruby and of the dog are very close so that they would have similar, very similar X coordinates. If you're if you're if you've decided that the ruby is a little bit to the left or right of the center of the dog, that's fine. But they should be fairly similar. Should any characters have Y coordinates that are similar? Well, that means they are similar distance from the X axis. So we went up from the X axis a similar amount. And what do we see? Danger Dog and Ninja Cat have similar. And um, the Ruby and the Cloud have similar Y coordinates. How do you think this concept relates to a video game? Well, when we move Ninja Cat around on the screen and are changing the X coordinate or the Y coordinate, then um, we're trying to get closer or farther away from one of these. And the way we're going to talk about closer and farther is measuring that distance from uh, those coordinates. So how does it know to um, kill Ninja Cat? Well, there's something special about the front end of this image so that when Ninja Cat overlaps, Ninja Cat's X coordinate overlaps with the dog's X coordinate and its Y coordinate is not far enough away, so we didn't jump high enough, then it triggers something in the program that says that Ninja Cat dies. Same thing with the Ruby when Ninja Cat's X and Y coordinates overlap with some, some part of the X and Y coordinates of the Ruby, then we get 10 points or one point, whatever we got. So this is very cool. It's going to be something else, another exercise for you to do. So let's um, go to page five. So I'm going to close that. Keep yours open or have your print out. So we're going to have a notice and wonder. So what do you notice and what do you wonder about what? So there's Ninja Cat Desmos. So let's see if we understand what that means. If we go back, sure enough, we have a uh, link to 
something called desmos.com that's been set up for us. Here's NinjaCat. Here's a grid area that is uh, set up with 640 by 480. Here's NinjaCat's position, which looks like it is at 491, so just before 5, yep, and 298. So just barely below 300. And we can even see how they've used Desmos to set up NinjaCat. You don't need an account. You don't need to log in or have an account for this. But um, if you want to set up your own um, uh, coordinate expl exploration, that would probably be cool and useful. And they've even set screen dimensions. So here's where they set up. The X is between 0 and 640. The Y is between 0 and and 480. So here they've, they've set up this, this green rectangle that they're calling screen dimensions. And then they put some limits on the X and the Y, what they're calling X and Y. It looks like they named all of these things. So they just created these elements uh, within this um, program and um, put NinjaCat in there. And they're going right to the center of that image. So now let's see what we can do. We can move this slider to change its X coordinate, move this slider to change its Y coordinate. So let's put him in the lower left, zero, zero. There he is. Let's put him in the top right, 640, 480. And his, his you can't see his, those, those blue and red lines anymore because he's, uh, they're, they're overlap. But let's move off just a little bit. There he is. So we can see the blue and the red as we've moved him to 593, 414. So if you did have trouble with the previous exercise of um, placing those coordinates, well, we can just place this image in those places. So NinjaCat was about here. The clouds were about here, maybe. I don't remember if it was left or the right. Uh, the ruby was over here. And the dog was down here. So you can really get a feel for those. So you take some time, pause the video, um, and fill out and talk to your partner about what are some things you notice about the coordinate system and what are some things that you wonder about the coordinate system. So go ahead and take 10 minutes and work through that. Great. Thank you for doing that. Hopefully you talk to your partner about those things. All right. Now, most of the, the rest of um, what we're going to talk about today is preparing you for some uh, to-do uh, to -do exercise that you'll do uh, as you do continue to design your game. Um, so let's first bring up page six in our workbook, uh, which doesn't have a page number here, but it's one called Brainstorm Your Game. So Brainstorm Your Game. So this is a um, game design document. If you look online, you can find game design documents from a lot of different companies. Um, they could be dozens or hundreds of pages long. They may be contributed to by many, many game designers and artists and musicians and programmers. And they're going to going to be the living document that um, helps to control how a game is designed. So hopefully when you learned last week and your research about some really complicated games, um, if you dig into uh, how those games are uh, developed, you'll find um, that they all have a really strict game design process. So this is yours since you are the, the designer. Um, it's very short because we don't have much to um, uh, we don't have need to need to add to it a lot yet. So fill in your name. This is a great one to print out, even if you're not printing out other things. This is a great document to print out, to have around. Um, talk to your partner. You'll notice this says brainstorm. So you don't have to commit to anything yet. You all, you, you and your partner can can discuss um, what you would like your game to be about, whether it is um, princesses or paper delivery, or 
dragons or whatever you can think of that you might want your game to be about. And then as you go through the process of finding images and figuring out how that game will work, you can change these things. But it's going to have these elements. Background, a player, a target, and a danger. And then you can draw how that all might fit together. So let's go back to the slides. So that's going to be the main to do for you next time is to come with your, your filled in uh, design document that will, will, will uh, form the basis of um, your game design. So um, how can you find images? So there's a couple of things uh, to work through. Let's go back to our materials. And in the materials is a Google Draw template. So since you're logged into WeScheme with your Google account, you also will have um, uh, the ability to, should to, to get to this Google Draw. When you click on that, click Make a Copy. This will go into the root, you know, to the to the main folder of your uh, Google Drive account. So um, you know, if you make any changes to it, uh, you might want to save it into a different folder or something. But just here's an example. And all of these images um, you can reposition. They've given us uh, a reminder for the coordinates. And those are just um, text elements. Um, so if you want to, I realized um, the, the, the very top box here is this blue, I'm going to undo that, is this blue, and in order to be able to like grab onto this hippo, which is the player, I'm going to right click and choose send backward to that blue box. Now I can grab the hippo. So I'm going to grab the hippo, move it out, uh, hit delete, that's fine, I'm going to undo that. So I can Oops. move elements around um, depending on how uh, I want things to happen so that um, if you, you know, after you draw your um, images here you can actually go ahead and acquire some art um, you want to make sure to use images that um, you'll have access that you have um, the legal right to use. So there's plenty of images uh, online that you can find with the uh, Creative Commons um, uh, license that allows you to to remix it. Um, and we'll look at a couple of um, uh, ways to search for those. So let's go back to our slides. They recommend finding transparent images on DuckDuckGo. So that's a, a search engine you can use that uh, that you can search by um, for transparent images. And if you play with the images for a while, you'll see why transparency is important. Also, um, so you don't have a, a box of you know white around. You see how this image of this hippo actually includes some a rectangle outside of the hippo and if that hippo was on a white background it would be white and you couldn't see the the slide through that so that's what a transparent image gives you so I'm see I wanted to show one other thing um, you can also search I found some very interesting things searching in Google Images just for Bootstrap World GIF. So here is images. Here's an example of a Ninja Cat game. So you, the, um, this person started the very, with using the same base code as we're going to use. Um, but you can see that this ninja moves up and down. It looks like you get, let's see if we can figure out the points. It looks like you get 10 points for uh, hitting the unicorn, and you poof out and lose 20 points uh, if you hit the dragon. Um, and those are moving left and right. The player is moving up and down, and they're, they're appearing at, at random places along the screen. So this is the kind of game. So don't get too uh, bogged down with what Ninja Cat game itself looks like. You can do anything you want with a background, a player, a danger, and a target. So they can be a lot of different 
options. Um, here's another one. And, and what I also see on this page, and we'll go in and click on here, is something from bootstrapworld.org, which means um, it should have a Creative Commons license. So here's a background. So here's some additional backgrounds you can use. If you can't find any as you're searching other places, well, here is an airport hallway. It's already uh, has an aspect ratio that's going to make it fit in our game. So that's something you'll be able to, to play with as you play with your um, template is you need to make sure it fits well with no gaps or uh, you know into this aspect ratio that's represented by 640 by 480. So um, hopefully, uh, I'm assuming that anything in this Bootstrap World backgrounds is gonna gonna fit. Um, we can go up a level by just taking off this backgrounds. And here's some monsters. So here's a robot, and it could be a danger. It could be a player. Um, let's see, we'll just look for what else we have here. Vehicles. So we could set a plane into the uh, background. So that is your assignment as you work through your page six workbook, come up with those ideas. Also, go ahead and acquire some art for each of those um, characters. So, think about what games you're going to come up with. What are the coordinates um, that you're going to use? Um, we'll, we'll talk, since this is a coordinates lesson, let's talk a little bit more about the coordinate system. So, let's go back to, let me go back to NinjaCat. This, this um, doesn't let us because of these restrictions here, it doesn't let us put this, this particular image off the screen. But when we played Ninja Cat, remember the dog was starting over here on the right, and he just started, he appeared here. So just because what we're seeing is this portion of the screen doesn't mean that we can't actually set the coordinates of an image outside. So that's a technique we might use as we call, as we go through our game it, to um, make an, a, uh, an image appear or disappear is by changing its coordinates outside of this green area. So why do you think we make estimates? This is something to think about as you go through your, uh, as you talk to your partner. What makes a good estimate? Why do we say some estimates are good or bad? How can we improve our estimation skills? I think you know that from the um, estimates we did today, the estimates we did last time, which um, my answer is uh, the more estimates you make, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And I think they are hinting at that with this word skills. Skills are things that we can improve. So. Um, don't worry if you have bad estimation skills, which uh, it probably means you just haven't practiced those skills enough. So one technique that, that I really like is the um, that they encouraged us in the last two lessons is to write down your estimations so that you really commit to them. Um, if you just kind of make a guess in your head, then look something up, it doesn't help to improve your skills near as much as writing it down so that you're really committing to it, then finding out the correct information and noticing um, how you got things wrong. So that's how you can improve that skill. And that's it for this lesson. So go back to the to-do. Make sure for next time, before you start the next lesson, that you have uh, filled out uh, a sheet where after you're brainstorming, or you're going to um, determine a player, a background, a danger, a target, and that you've already gotten some art uh, available for that. If you if 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 you have not used the um, uh, 
uh, you know, any type of presentation software before, where was that? Here it is. You know, if you've not used anything like that before, um, that is a skill uh, in itself that you don't have to have everything perfect right now, um, but go ahead and you know either either draw or try to look for some art that you might want to use in your game. But we don't have to commit to anything right now um, for what the art looks like, but do go ahead and uh, write down and discuss with your partner what elements you might want to use and kind of the story of your game, and we can improve the art over the next few weeks as we uh, learn how to code. All right, let's go through and uh, review. Um, we uh, Hopefully you um, are better now with the skill of estimating positions of option coordinates. You um, are planning to collaborate with your partner on brainstorming. And you're going to mock up. So those are a couple of terms that are good for talking about this process of what we see here is mocking up. So just making a quick uh, proof of concept image that will let you communicate with your partner um, and other people as to what your game is going to be about. Let's see if we hit all of the vocabulary. Was there a glossary? There. All right, coordinates. Yep. Horizontal and vertical axis. I don't know if I use the terms horizontal. Horizontal goes along the horizon, so it's what we call the x-axis. The vertical axis goes up and down, so it is the y-axis. Talked about Danger Dog. We had fun with the Desmos activity for Ninja Cat. Yeah, this is just a, just a good good thing to, to talk about. Um, when we talk about that skill of estimation, it is something that can improve. Um, and common sense and intuition does have a place in those things. When you talk to professional mathematicians, a lot of them start with common sense estimates. And what makes really good mathematicians are people who have an intuition that's been built by years and years of practice um, where they can get started on a path that may lead to the right answer faster than other people. So uh, they, 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 they mentioned screenshots. We didn't have a slide on that, but you know, you, you guys know uh, how to take screenshots nowadays. Um, uh, or you can just use your, your, your handheld. And in fact, that may be something um, we want to mention for this screen um, and so that you don't have to open the slides when, when, you, when we have an assignment screen like this. Go ahead right now. Take a screenshot so that you know uh, you can remember exactly what to do. But th this, this lesson was pretty clear from the materials um, that you want to bring up this brainstorm, your game sheet. We talked about some things that might be on screen or off screen. Um, and this one, the, the slides didn't mention, but this one mentions also the game over. If you remember from Ninja Cat, when, when we get killed, there's a game over. Where is that? before it's being used, which probably got a coordinate that is off of that screen. And then when the death of Ninja Cat happens, then it just changes the coordinate so that we can see it. Uh, so that's a common technique, and we'll, we'll use that as we co uh, code our game. So good luck in uh, brainstorming your game. I think it will be fun, and uh, don't feel like you can't change it. Um, you can do any kind of story you want. Um, so be creative with coming up with the elements of a background, a player, a target, and a danger.